Gallop. Singles. Hey there, fabulous dancer, and welcome back to my channel. Or if this is the first time that you are here, welcome. I am so glad that you have joined me. Today, we are diving in to talk about my favorite tiny little instrument, the finger cymbals. Whether you are already a total fan like myself or are brand new, this is a fantastic basic drill that's going to lead you through understanding how to count the finger cymbals and then how to play two very basic rhythms with two different sounds and get you moving to the music right away. My name is Sahira and I'm here to teach you the beautiful art of belly dance. If you enjoy this kind of step-by-step -step finger cymbal tutorial to help you get a solid foundation for these fabulous instruments and to be able to play them confidently while belly dancing, definitely like this video and subscribe to my channel so I can send you new finger cymbal content on a regular basis. And if you are looking to get a solid foundation and start your finger cymbal journey today, you'll definitely want to sign up for my free program, Zillstar, which is designed to do just that. You can find it at sahirabellydances.com slash Zillstar and it will be emailed to you and you can take it in instantly on your computer right away today to become the Zillstar that you, my friend, are meant to be. Alrighty, folks, so if you are brand new to the finger symbols, just a very quick tutorial on how to wear these things, yeah? You're gonna want two on each hand. You're gonna put one zill on your thumb, one zill on your middle finger. I like to wear it near that last knuckle or very close to the nail bed, right? Make sure your elastics are nice and tight because you don't want them falling off while you're playing. And then make sure that when you close your hands naturally, they come together fairly seamlessly, fairly evenly on top of one another. And if they don't do that, adjust them slightly so that they do. Today, we're gonna to be working with two different sounds. Let me show those to you first so you know how to create them cleanly so that they sound pleasant and don't annoy your neighbor. Yeah, we're gonna be working with the basic tone. When I do the basic tone, you wanna think about opening up your finger symbols just enough, not super wide, but just enough so that they have some space between them. You're gonna bring that middle symbol down onto the thumb symbol with a nice connection. I usually offset it just a little bit to give it a cleaner tone, and then you're gonna lift up to draw out the ring. So nice, yeah? We'll try it with the other side too, same idea. I invite you go ahead and do one and then the other, making sure they sound fairly similar, right? Making sure that connection is clean and not muddy. Watch out for, right? Watch out for muddy sounds. You wanna think about it just bouncing off one single time and drawing the sound out. Keep all of the other fingers nice and relaxed, right? No tension in the hand, because that's gonna slow you down. Nice, relaxed fingers. Don't open the hand too much. Beautiful arm posture, right? Don't lose your beautiful belly dance arm posture just because we put symbols on your fingers, yeah? Excellent, last one there. The other sound we're gonna use today is the clack, which is very similar other than you're going to relax your fingers on top of your top zill to muffle it so there is no ring. And instead of drawing the sound out with a ring in the basic tone like we just did, you're going to close and leave it closed and it's gonna clack and make no resonance at all, right? So when you do this, there might be a temptation to really like put some tension in your hand and close down hard, please don't do that because your hands are gonna get really tired and then you're gonna complain that billing is painful <laughs> and I don't want you to do that, right? It's not painful. You're just gonna close and leave it closed. Be nice and gentle, yeah? So alternating one side, then the other, taking a listen, making sure they sound pretty even, right? Keeping your fingers as relaxed as possible, making sure that those fingers are down on top of the top sill so you're muffling that so no ring happens, yeah? Excellent. Those are our two sounds that we'll be using today, the basic and the clack. So now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about how we are going to count the finger cymbals. Finger cymbals are a musical instrument, so we are going to count them like the musicians that we are. Yes, we're gonna count them similarly to the dance, so most of it should be pretty familiar. I like to always keep you moving while you're playing from step one, right? Because the hardest part about playing finger cymbals is typically dancing while you do it, and so, we don't wanna sit down and play them because then getting up and dancing is a big change. What I'm gonna ask you to do today is start with a simple step together step so that we're marking time with the body the entire time. So instantaneously your brain and your fingers are putting together tempo and rhythm and body movement, right? So kinesthetically, you're building that muscle memory from the get go, even if you're not quote unquote belly dancing, yeah? And then if you're feeling comfortable, definitely progress and do some moves on top of this. We'll play with that just a little bit later. So we're gonna be thinking one, two, three, four. One, 
two, three, four. We're going to be working with two basic patterns. The first one's going to be very simple, and the second one is actually the most common pattern. We play with the finger symbols typically, the gallop, but I'm going to build you into it so you can understand how it's related to the singles we're going to play first, which are simply on the beat, right? So if we are thinking one, two, three, four, I'd like you to go ahead and play singles on a basic on the beat. One, two, three, four. Singles on the beat. So you're stepping and your cymbals are matching. This is the best way to start because it makes a lot of sense, right? It's much easier than the alternatives, right? We're gonna build up to the difficulty, but right now you're matching hands with feet, right? I want you to alternate your hands, one hand, the other, one hand, the other, right? Even though you're stepping side to side, just keep alternating the hands. So we're going one, two, count with me. It's a one, two, three, Four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One more. One, two, three, four. Nice job. I know you got that. Yeah, nailed it. Excellent. Let's go ahead and double time the zills. We're going to keep the feet the same, so it gets a little tricky. Keeping the feet the same. One, two, three, four. The zills are going to go twice as fast, so we're counting them one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. So for every step, you're getting two zill strokes. I'm gonna go right, left, right, left, right, left, right, left, continuously alternating the whole time. Yeah, <clears throat> so I invite you to say it with me and play it with me. If the playing doesn't work, say it first, because if you can say it, you'll eventually be able to play it. Yeah, so we're gonna go one, two, here we go. It's one and two and three and four and 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 two and three and keep it going. Try to make it nice and even. All right? No skipping. Nice and even. Let's go four more. Four. Three. Two more. Keep those fingers relaxed. Arms are long and beautiful. And pause. Nicely done. So we've got our singles. We've got now our um, our eighth notes. So that's the double time. Now we're going to build the gallop. What I would like to do is we're going to add one more stroke in. We're going to add this stroke between the and and the one to create our gallop. Most of you may have heard of this before, but if you haven't, let me count it for you. If we're going one, two, three, four, then we did one and two and three and four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two, and a three, and a four. So this pattern, the gallop, which I think is the most popular zill pattern to play, most likely, if you play any zills, you've probably heard it before. Uh, and if you don't, this is the perfect, perfect one to start with because it works with everything. You're going to start just before the one, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. So it kind of leads you into the downbeat, which I think is why they call it the gallop, because it feels like it really propels you forward like a horse galloping, yeah? And a one, and a two and a three, and a four, and a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. I like to play it right, left, right. Right, left, right, 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 right, left, right. If you're left-handed, perhaps you'd like to go with the left first and do left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left, left, right, left. Or you can continuously alternate the entire time. Right, left, 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 right, left. This kind of a mouthful, yeah? So I invite you to play with what works for you and eventually settle on something that is reproducible, right? So you kind of know what's going on in your hands. We're going to slow it down just a little bit. We're going to go one, two, three, four. I'm going to invite you to say it with me before we play it, yeah? I really want you to hone in on this musical counting because it's going to really benefit you in the long run. And I want you to feel that even steadiness so that the hands come in right on the beat. One, two, here we go. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. And a one, and a two, and a three, and a four. 
and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three. Here we go. And a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three and a four and a one and a two and a three. Keep it going. And pause. Nicely done. All righty, Zilstar, now the rubber hits the road, or the metal hits the metal, I guess. We're going to go ahead and build a simple little combination so that we can use these ideas and put them with music and maybe even some dancing, right? So I promised you two sounds. We're going to alternate between the basic and the clack. We're going to use the basic for the gallop like we just did, and a one and a two and a three and a four with that basic tone. And then I want us to just go to that pulse, go to those singles, go to those quarter notes we did at first, one, two, three, four, and I'll invite you to use the clack when we get there. So what it's going to sound like is four counts of each. We'll go and a one and a two and a three and a four. One, two, three, four. And a one and a two and a three and a four. One, two, three, four. So no matter what happens with the gallop, if it starts to get a little funky, you always come right back home to those clacks on the one, two, three, four to keep you steady. Here's how we're gonna level up the movement. I ask you to please do that step touch at a minimum, right? Because this is gonna instantly train your brain that we move while we play these things. We don't sit, sit still, we don't freak out, we don't you know, clam up, right? Which are all possibilities, but we're not gonna do that, right? We move, so I want you to move ideally with a little bit of rhythm so that your body is hooking into that rhythm as well. Once we're feeling good here, I'm gonna invite you to move your arms. I'm gonna give you a couple of different arm pathways to play with. You can follow me or create your own, right? I'm trying to do nice, beautiful, mindful arms that still have all of that strength and poise we always have when we're dancing. And then if that's feeling good, we'll start adding some movement. Maybe a figure eight, right? You can take whatever your favorite belly dance moves are maybe an inner hip roll. I find that in general, if you want to ramp up the challenge, first do a smooth movement. They all have counts, right? But this one's a little easier to like swoosh around if you're not quite sure where things are going, right? And then if you wanna use something that's much more rhythmic, one, two, three, four, that's a good challenge as well, especially when your finger symbols are doing something different, which they almost always are. Yes, so we're gonna do this with music. We're gonna play four counts of gallop uh, with the basic tone, and then we are going to do four counts of singles with the clack, and I'll lead you through some movement options to keep leveling up your skill. All right, take a deep breath. Find your beautiful posture, roll those shoulders back and down. Relax the hands. We're gonna start with that step touch, yeah? Five, six, gallop. Singles. Gallop. Keep it going. More like that. Can we start to move the arms? Let's see what happens. Move back down. Let's try that one more time. some belly dance movements. You can choose your own. Or follow me. You move. Oh, 
clapping the arms. Take it to your level of challenge, yeah? Feel free to play. New move. want to know, let me know, post below. How did that work out for you? I think the biggest takeaway here is the importance of immediately pairing together movement with your zilling if you're a belly dancer who plans to move while zilling. If you're a musician and you're just going to play the finger symbols while seated, don't worry about it. You got it. But it's always good to understand that pulse or that inner heartbeat of the music, right? Because everything we do as dancers and as musicians ties into that, right? So I highly encourage you when you practice anything, you're practicing your technique, you're drilling, you're working on dexterity, you're working on learning new patterns, hook it into that rhythm. Find that heartbeat of the music and make sure you're right in there. Practice with a metronome. Understand what it means like to be uh, right in the pocket of the beat instead of sort of floating over the beat, right? There are so many beautiful things you can do with the finger symbols and it all starts with this very solid foundation of understanding their relationship to the music. I would love to hear from you. Let me know what you thought of that and let me know what you would like to learn about Zilling next. And if you are just getting started and you're looking for a solid foundation to really create an incredible Zill practice of your own, definitely check out my Zill Star program, sahirabellydances.com slash Zill Star. It's a brand new, it's a free program that will allow you to understand finger symbols in a deeper way that'll get you from step one, picking out a pair of symbols, being able to sew them on without drawing blood and playing some of the basic tones and basic rhythms that are foundational to our dance. I would love to make music with you there.